Greetings, Knowledge Seekers. In today's video, we delve into the fascinating world of propositions and explore the four types of propositions. Propositions are statements that express something about a subject, and understanding their components is key to unlocking their meaning. So, let's dive right in and explore the four types of propositions and their parts. Propositions can be classified into four types based on their meaning and structure. Each type conveys a different relationship between the subject and the predicate, and they are represented by specific symbols. Let's explore each type and understand their characteristics. The first type is the universal affirmative proposition, represented by the symbol A. It expresses that the entire subject belongs to the predicate. For example, the proposition all men are mortal is a universal affirmative proposition, where all men are included in the category of being mortal. The second type is the universal negative proposition, represented by the symbol E. It negates the entire subject's association with the predicate. An example of a universal negative proposition is no men are mortal, indicating that there is no overlap between the category of men and being mortal. Moving on, we have the particular affirmative proposition, denoted by the symbol I. This proposition asserts that at least some part of the subject belongs to the predicate. For instance, the proposition some men are moral implies that there exists a subset of men who possess moral qualities. Lastly, we have the particular negative proposition, symbolized by O. It indicates that at least some part of the subject does not belong to the predicate. An example of a particular negative proposition is some men are not mortal, suggesting the existence of a subset of men who are not part of the mortal category. Now, let's examine the different parts that make up propositions. Every proposition consists of four key elements that help convey its meaning. The first part is the quantifier, which expresses the quantity or extent of the proposition. It signifies whether the proposition refers to all, no, some are, or some are not. The second part is the subject, which is the part about which something is being said in the proposition. It represents the entity or concept under discussion. Next, we have the copula, which shows the relation between the predicate and the subject. It signifies the connection or link between the two parts of the proposition. Lastly, we have the predicate, which is the part of the proposition that affirms or denies something about the subject. It describes what is being attributed to or denied about the subject. For example, let's consider the proposition all girls are pretty. Here, all is the quantifier, girls is the subject, are is the copula, and pretty is the predicate. Understanding these parts allows us to decipher the intended meaning of propositions and comprehend the relationship between the subject and the predicate. In summary, propositions come in four types, universal affirmative, universal negative, particular affirmative, and particular negative. Each type conveys a distinct meaning and is represented by specific symbols. Additionally, propositions consist of four key parts, the quantifier, subject, copula, and predicate, which work together to express their intended meaning. Thank you for joining us on this enlightening journey into the world of propositions. If you found this video informative, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and hit the notification bell to stay updated with our future content. Keep exploring the intricacies of logic, keep expanding your understanding, and until next time, stay curious.